In this question, do you have multitask requirements that test the topic areas of variances and standard costing? In task one, you've been presented with a screenshot of a spreadsheet, and this has been used for calculating the variances for Castel de Co, which manufactures toy robots. We need to select the formula which will correctly calculate the direct labor efficiency variance. We can see from the screenshot of the spreadsheet that the direct labor efficiency variance is $48,000 favorable. Therefore, to derive the answer, we simply rework the formulas that have been given to us in the options. Let's do precisely that, starting with the first option. You've got the information in cell C9 multiplied by the information in cell C4 less 150,000 multiplied by 8. Now the information in cell C9 is the production activity level in units for the actuals and that is 26,000 units. The information in cell C4 is the information on the direct labor cost per single unit produced, and that is the $48. We're going to multiply this together and then take away 150,000 multiplied by 8. If I plug this in my calculator, I immediately get $48,000 as a positive, implying $48,000 favorable. This confirms that the first option is the correct answer. And just to prove that the others aren't, let's do a similar recalculation for the other options provided. So the second option says take the information in cell B13. So this is the information about the direct labor as a total cost. So that's the 1,221,000. And then we're going to take away from that the information from cell C9, which is the production actual units, 26,000, multiplied by the information in cell C4, which is the information for the direct labor cost for a single unit, the $48. We multiply this through and we end up getting an adverse $27,000. So it's definitely not option two. Looking at option three, you've got the information in cell C9 multiplied by the information in cell C4 less the information in B13. Now, if you think about it, that really is just a variation on the equation that we've just calculated above. This means that it can't be option three because you would simply get a positive $27,000 as your answer which leaves for us the final equation to confirm that that is not the option either. So if we start with 150,000, take away the information in cell C9, again, that's the 26,000 actual production units, multiplied by six, and then all of this is going to be multiplied by eight. When we multiply this all out, we do end up with 48,000. However, it is adverse, so it cannot be option four. Having dealt with task one, we can now move on to task two. Task two is where we need to complete the reconciliation for the standard cost operating statement for month one. You've got a template with some numbers and information that we need to populate. So the standard template will start with the budgeted contribution and following this, you will typically have the sales volume variance. You do not want to select the total sales variance because the price variance is given underneath, nor should you be selecting the fixed overhead volume variance because that is not part of the first bit of this operating statement. So we're going to disregard that option. Now, to calculate the sales volume variance, let's think about the working that we would typically produce. To calculate the sales volume variance, we always take the actual quantity less the standard quantity and we multiply this by the standard contribution per unit. From the information provided in this question, we can see that the actual quantity that they've sold during the year is 25,600 units. They anticipated or budgeted that they would sell 25,000 units. 
instantly what we observe is that the actual quantity they've sold exceeds the standard quantity they anticipated they would sell. So we're going to end up with a favourable variance. We want to multiply this by the standard contribution per unit, which is provided in the question as $28. We multiply this through and what we get is 16,800 favourable for our sales volume variance. Let's get that down as the answer for our sales volume variance in task 2. Don't forget to select the favourable option in the drop down. Now, to get your standard contribution on actual sales, we're simply taking the 700,000 and adding on the favourable sales volume variance that we've calculated. This gives us 716,800. Next, you need to calculate the sales price variance. The formula to calculate the sales price variance is always the actual price less the standard price and this information is on a per unit basis multiplied by the actual quantity that has been sold. Now, the actual price has not been stated in this question, but we can work it out from the information that's provided. So let's scroll back up to look at the information in the spreadsheet. We know what the total sales revenue is as a monetary amount. This is the 3 million and 66,880. We also know that they've actually sold 25,600 units that will help us derive the actual price. The actual price being $119.80. The standard price for a single unit has been given as 120. And we've said that the actual quantity that they've sold is 25,600. The first thing to observe is that the actual price per unit is less than what they'd anticipated selling a single unit for. So we're going to end up with an adverse variance and the amount for that adverse variance is going to equate to 5,120. Let's slot this into task two. We can confirm our answer by taking the standard contribution on actual sales of 716,800 less the adverse sales price variance of 5,120 and it does give us 711,680. You can also see at this point that we've answered all parts of this question correctly. Let's move on to address the very final bit of this task which is a theoretical requirement. Here we're being asked to think about the interrelationship between the direct labour rate and the efficiency variances for month one. And we've got some options to select. We need to pick two of these. Now, looking at the information within this question, we can see that the direct labour rate variance is an amount that's 21,000 adverse. However, the direct labour efficiency variance is a variance that's 48,000 favourable. Now, looking at the options that have been provided, which two of these would explain this interrelationship? The first option reads that higher grade labour perform tasks more efficiently. Well, if you've got higher grade labour, you're going to be paying them more. Paying them more is going to result in a direct labour rate variance that is adverse. However, the fact that you're using higher grade labour means that they're likely to be more efficient. And that does confirm the interrelationship that we've just uncovered. So we're going to select the first option. Now, the second option reads that lower grade labour perform tasks less efficiently. Well, it can't be this option because we know that the direct labour efficiency variance was favourable. So we're going to disregard option two. Option three says the actual production was less than budgeted. Now, in all honesty, that's really not going to impact the direct labour rate and efficiency interrelationship because that's to do with the output levels. So by default, it will be the final option that reads a productivity bonus was paid to direct labour. Now, if a productivity bonus is paid, you're going to get an adverse labour rate variance because you're paying the staff an additional amount. And by 
paying staff an additional amount, they're likely to be more motivated and therefore more efficient, hence the favourable labour efficiency variance. So there you have it. We've answered this question and as you can see, all parts have been dealt with correctly.